Do you know how to make sure that your agave utensis is growing as blue as it possibly can? Because blueness in agave utensis is actually one of my favorite traits. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today is that why some agave utensis varieties like Nevadensis seem to grow much bluer than other kinds of agave utensis like Ebora spina and how you in cultivation can ensure that your plants are getting the right conditions to produce the bluest leaves they possibly can. So yeah, my favorite trait of agave utensis is blue leaves, particularly the, the blue leaves that uh, agave utensis nevadensis can show. Um, and by the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you the key to making sure that your agave utensis that you're growing in your collection is growing as blue as it possibly can. And not only doing that based on the science, based on the studies that I've read about the subject, but also based on the experience that I have growing a bunch of agave utensis from seed, which by the way, you can buy my plants on my website at mojave.lv. So, if you've read Howard Scott Gentry's book, Agaves of Continental North America, uh, and you should, if you're an agave nerd, if you're into agaves like I am, you should definitely read Gentry. Um, but if you do, you'll read when he's talking about agave utensis and where he talks about the fact that basically variability is a species trait. Meaning if you visit enough agave utensis plants and habitat, you'll start to realize that one of the defining characteristics of that species is the fact that the plants are all very variable, right? And especially if you, you visit different populations. Uh, and, and you know, you can see that those plants look very different. They're all agave utensis, but they look very different from each other. And even when you're looking at specific populations, individual populations, and you just look at plants that are, you know, a few feet from each other, you'll find that those plants can also look pretty different from each other. And some of those, you know, defining, you know, variable traits are things like spine length or rosette size or the, um, you know, number of offsets it produced, but produces. But I think the most interesting one is uh, leaf color, right? Uh, some agave utensis varieties, particularly uh, agave utensis subspecies utensis variety Ebora spina and agave utensis subspecies Caba bensis are known to grow uh, much greener leaves, right? Than say agave utensis uh, subspecies utensis variety nevadensis does. And of course, this isn't a rule that's set in stone. Variety is a species characteristic after all. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later in the video. But generally speaking, the greener agave utensis ebora spina plants grow at lower elevations, say just over 4,000 feet, than the much bluer agave utensis variety nevadensis does, which grows in many cases well over 6,000 feet. And it's that altitude difference that gives us our first clue to understanding why some agave utensis are much bluer than other kinds of agave utensis. Last week we talked about sky islands and life zones and the idea that as you climb vertically in elevation, uh, precipitation goes up and temperature goes down. But there's actually also a third environmental characteristic, environmental trait that changes based on altitude and that is UV exposure. It's called the altitude effect. Basically, for every thousand feet or so you climb in elevation, studies have shown that there's somewhere between two and 4% more UV radiation, right? That's because there's less atmosphere. Atmos the atmosphere of the Earth generally absorbs most of the UV radiation coming from the sun. When you go up in higher altitudes, there's less atmosphere between you and the sun, which is why if you've ever spent any time out in the mountains, you know that the higher up in elevation you go, the more important it is to wear sunscreen or you know, UV protective clothing. But of course, plants can't put sunscreen on because they don't have uh, arms. What they can do is grow a waxy blue coating that botanists call glaucus. That's actually an adjective. They, a leaf is considered glaucus if it is blue because of this waxy coating. And this waxy coating is, is produced by plants for a number of reasons, like to waterproof the leaves. But in our case, the, the, the reason that we're most interested in is to protect itself from UV stress. Right? And so studies have actually shown that plants growing up at higher altitudes that are thus exposed to more UV radiation tend to grow more of those glaucous, waxy blue coating uh, than, than plants that grow lower. And that that waxy blue glaucous coating can actually reflect more of the UV light that would otherwise penetrate the leaf and could potentially damage it. 
So it's probably a good bet that uh, the reason that most agave utensis Eborospina plants are greener than most agave utensis nevadensis plants is because the Eborospina plants are growing at lower altitudes. Of course, like I said, that, that, that trait isn't always set in stone. There are deviations to it. In fact, I've seen photos of agave utensis Eborospina that are growing up much higher elevations than they typically are, and those plants actually do show very blue leaves. But I think that overall, it's a pretty safe assumption to assume that those isolated Sky Island populations of agave utensis have developed the genetics, have developed the DNA, have evolved to produce only the amount of glaucous blue coating, waxy coating, that they need to, to, to protect themselves from the amount of UV radiation that they're exposed to. For the lower growing Eborospina, that's a lot less than it is for the higher growing uh, agave utensis nevadensis. But we shouldn't discount the uh, nurture side of that nature versus nurture debate, right? Genetics clearly plays a big role in the coloring of a leaf of agave utensis, but also how individual plants are treated and, and the kinds of UV exposure that individual plants get can also play a huge role on the coloration. And in fact, studies on other plants have shown that not only does do, do plants growing at high altitudes tend to produce more of those that waxy blue glaucous covering coating, but they you know and does not only does that glaucous covering uh, reflect more of the UV light, but additionally exposing plants to more UV radiation, particularly UVB, which is a specific segment of the ultraviolet radiation spectrum, can encourage those plants, can induce those plants to create more of that blue, uh, waxy, glaucous coating. And so what that means is that for us in cultivation, if we're looking to produce the bluest plants we possibly can, and I know I am, because I'm a sucker for a blue plant, and that's like my favorite thing, so I'm definitely trying to grow my plants as blue as possible, that means that what we need to do is to expose our plants to as much UV radiation, as much UV stress as that we can put it under without actually damaging the plant. And that primarily comes down to, in most people's cases, uh, to temperature, right? Because again, agave utensis nevadensis, the bluest of all the agave utensis, grows in sky islands that as you climb an elevation in a sky island, temperature decreases. And many of the sky islands that agave utensis nevadensis grows in are up so high that even in the heat of the summer, they rarely get above 100. In most cases, they barely even get above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, right? So for most folks in cultivation, the key is going to become how much UV radiation can we put on the plants without cooking them essentially, right? And that's borne out in my experience here, in my, you know, the growing the plants that I do, right? I live in Las Vegas and the valley in Las Vegas here where I live is, is at about 2000 feet. So it's more UV exposure than somebody would get uh, if they were at sea level, but it's a lot less than five or 6,000 or 7,000 feet where many of these plants grow in the mountains. But down here in the valley, it gets super duper duper hot, right? So if I take a Nagavi Utensis plant, a seedling or a yearling or a two-year-old plant, and I put it outside in full sun, it's gonna melt, it's gonna turn yellow and die uh, in a matter of hours, maybe not even a fully an hour. So while I grow most of my plants inside, I have actually put a number of them outside to see how they do. And I have to put them, not only do I have to put them in an area of my uh, yard where they're only getting full sun for part of the day, but I also have to use some pretty drastic shade cloths. I have to actually use 50% shade cloth, which basically means that the plants are only getting exposed to about 50% of the sunlight, which includes UV radiation, that they would get if they weren't under said shade cloth. But then when I compare those plants, the plants grown outside versus the plants grown inside, even though they come from the same seed batch, they have very similar genetics, they're the same parent plants essentially, the plants grown outside that actually get a lot less UV stress than the plants that I'm growing inside under high power LED lighting, the outdoor plants are much greener than the indoor plants, which have that blue glaucous covering, in some cases white or even gray looking. So again, the key to making sure that your agave utensis grows as blue as it possibly can is to balance temperature with UV exposure. How much UV can you give it without melting the plant? And if you live in a moderate climate, somewhere where you can put agave utensis outside year round without it melting, then that's probably gonna be the easiest and cheapest way to do it, right? Because the sun, the light from the sun is free, essentially. You don't gotta buy the sun or you know, pay for the sun's energy, right? Um, but remember, uh, you know, if you're not at 5,000 feet or so of elevation, your plants are still not going to be getting the same amount of UV exposure that they would if they were actually growing up in their natural habitat, and especially they're not. If you're using a greenhouse or some sort of shade cloth, then they're definitely not getting the same kind of UV exposure that a plant would naturally get up in habitat.
So I think the best option, if you're really, really interested in growing the best looking, bluest, almost whitest uh, agave utensils plants possible, is to grow them indoors with artificial lighting. And the key with the artificial lighting is to ensure that that artificial lighting is actually full spectrum. And what that means is that the lighting solution, the, the bulbs, the panels, the LED, whatever it is, is producing you know, as much of the full spectrum of light as possible. So white light, which we see the visible spectrum, which most lighting things do is somewhere in the white light spectrum, is just the visible light. And that's where most of the photosynthetically active radiation actually is. It's you know, between say red and about purple or so, right? But full spectrum lighting will also provide some light in the infrared spectrum, which you can't actually even see, the, the far red spectrum. Uh, and then they'll provide some radiation, some light down in the uh, UV section, UVA, UVB. Most of it's not gonna be UVC, um, but, but that's what full spectrum means. And so for me, I think my favorite uh, way to do that, my favorite appliances, lighting appliances to use to, to grow agave utensils are high power, high wattage, LED panels that have a number of different kinds of diodes on them. Now, the majority of those diodes are, are just white because again, that's, that's the visible light spectrum, most of where, the, where most of the photosynthetically active radiation is, but then they also have a number of other specialty diodes, right? Like they'll have uh, diodes that look kind of dimly red, and that's the far red, and then they'll have diodes that don't even look like they're lighting up, and that's the infrared, which you can't see with your eyes, and then they'll have diodes that look purple, and that's the UV lighting. It's basically black lighting if you've ever you know, looked at a black light poster at a head shop. Um, and, and it's that UV lighting, that UV exposure, that UV radiation, particularly UVB. Now most of UV radiation is UVA, that's the closest to the visible spectrum, but UVB is the one that's been shown in studies to actually produce the biggest effect on that waxy blue glaucous covering that we're all looking for. Uh, that's the stuff, that, that UV light is the stuff that we're, we're, we're trying to get, trying to maximize if we're trying to maximize the blueness of our agave utensils. Now, it's entirely possible to still grow super cool looking agave utensils under just natural light or you know, normal sort of visible spectrum human lights. Um, but again, if you're a nerd like I am and you're really trying to grow the bluest, coolest looking agave utensils uh, possible, then you may want to look at what sort of full spectrum lighting situations you can put into your space that fit into your budget with the number of plants you have, etc. So I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Do you grow your agave utensils outside? Do you grow them inside? Uh, is your lighting situation giving enough UV exposure to produce the blueness that you are looking for? Thanks for watching.